Hey guys, there's Tedward. They are all here just because of you and your specialness. Say hi. Today we're talking about how my cuteness skyrocketed mommy's career to being a social media content creator. Basically, the only reason that I am here today, self-employed, making a bunch of money doing what I love, is because other influencers and content creators shared their own journeys. Telling my boss that I was putting in my two weeks was probably the scariest thing that I've ever done. Appreciate everything you've done, of course. And yeah, don't feel nervous about it or anything. It's a really exciting time and that's how you should feel, so. Yeah. Um. Thank you. But I had planned and I had set a date and I said that on this day, I am going to put in my two weeks and it's going to be okay. And it was. Here are the three things that I did before quitting my job to become a content creator influencer full time. The first thing that I did was I laid out all of my finances, took a look at everything, the amount of money that I had coming in from being an influencer and my income streams, the amount of money that I had going out for my bills, for my groceries, for my gas, for the fun things that I wanted to do. I took a look at both of those things, added up how much money I was spending pretty much every month. You can also use apps like Truebill and it will like lay out and categorize all the money that's going out of your banking accounts so you can kind of get a more realistic picture of how much money you're spending every month. I decided that as an influencer with my income streams, I needed to make $5,000 every month to be able to keep up on my bills and the small little lifestyle things that I like. For everyone else, this number may be completely different, but I live in Phoenix. The the cost of living is lower here than in other places and $5,000 was, you know, the minimum amount that I needed to make to feel comfortable. The second thing that I did was come up with a savings goal. I wanted to have a certain amount of money in my savings account so that I knew if I wasn't getting paid for six months that I would still be okay. So basically I just took the number that I came up with in step one and multiplied it by six and put it into my savings goal. So I wanted to have six months worth of my mortgage payment and the other necessities just in case. So my number was $30,000. I think I ended up saving $40,000, which was amazing and made me feel even better about quitting my job. And I think if you're working a full-time job and also making your $5,000 a month or whatever that goal was that you wanted to make every month, you should be able to just be taking all of that influencer content creator money and putting it into your savings account. That is what I did. I didn't send any extra money. I was just in full on savings mode. And the third thing that I did before quitting my job was hired an accountant. I got all of that accounting stuff set up because I didn't know if I was doing anything correctly. And what my accountant did was turn my business into an S corp so that my business was paying me, Devin, as a separate employee. And I guess that helps you not pay as much money in taxes. And it just made more sense for what I was doing. Honestly, I would talk to an accountant as soon as you start making influencer money. You also need to create an LLC, um, open a business bank account, and your accountant will help you make sure you're doing all of that correctly. I now pay my accountant about $230 every month. She does my bookkeeping and pays my taxes quarterly and just make sure that I'm doing everything correctly in the tax and finance realm because I don't know anything about that. And she just makes me feel a lot better, make sure that I'm doing everything above board and correctly. It was really scary taking the plunge and deciding to pull the trigger and become an influencer full time. But I knew that once I had all of my time to dedicate to being an influencer and a content creator, I would be able to make even more money than I was previously. And I also saw every year I was just growing more and more and more. And I just believed that I would continue to grow in followers, in experience, in the amount of money that I was making. And I have already doubled my salaried income from my graphic design job and it's only April. It's absolutely incredible to be able to do this as my career. I dreamt about this for two years and I made a goal and I thought about it every single day and I made it happen. And I hope that this series and this channel is inspiring to other people that want to do this as well.
I just got an order from Abercrombie and I tried everything on. I have like a really, really small waist and then normal sized hips and uh, thighs. So jeans are always either way too tight on my thighs and then fitting my waist or opposite. And it's been especially hard with like the baggy jeans trend being in because I want my jeans to be baggy but then I'm compromising the jeans actually staying up on my waist. So um, Abercrombie has curve love jeans and those jeans have like a bigger hip area. So they're not really tight around your thighs and one pair fit perfectly, the other pair was too big. So I need to size down, but I'm obsessed. But like, I need to show, I need to go to a mirror. I'll show you guys in a second. They are just so cute. I'm wearing multiple things that Abercrombie sent me, but these are the 90s straight leg high rise. And I think they're my favorite fit of jeans for a person that is skinny, but a little bit curvier. This shirt is also Abercrombie. And then this tank is Abercrombie as well. But when I decided to go full time with social media, it was like a really big transition. I also decided at the same time to really push into the lifestyle niche rather than just the pet niche. Um, really, it came down to me being so burnt out and out of ideas, just focusing on Willow and dogs. There's so much more to my life that I wanna share. And now that this is my full-time job, I really need to... I don't know what the cats are doing. I really need to share what I want and what I enjoy sharing. Willow. Yeah, my last video, I really talked about why I decided to say goodbye to Willow the Corgi and hello to Devin and Willow. And it's been um, actually really scary trying to figure out what my niches really are going to be um, to attract human brands rather than just dog brands. Like I'm making all this content just so that brands that I love will see that I'm here. I'm, I'm a creator too, you can hire me. Um, I started working with a management team. So I have managers doing all my brand deals and they've actually helped me get a couple of partnerships from their brand partners. Um, I think like two and all the other ones have been coming to me, but like, it's really hard when you're an established influencer in one niche. And then you're like almost starting from scratch, trying to get into another niche. <laughs> so it's been really overwhelming and I've been doubting myself so much and feeling like an imposter and just like really beating myself up a lot. I know it's like a growing curve and eventually it will all work out because it always does. But um, my engagement has just been going down. Um, I've been losing a lot of followers. I've been growing really strong connections with the followers that do care about the content that I'm making now. But man, it has been really hard and really stressful. Um, it is April now and I feel like things are starting to get better and I just keep waiting for that like switch to flip and um, one thing that I've been telling myself to do because I get jealous when I see people that I look to for inspiration like doing things that I want to be doing, um, being invited to events or working with brands that I use all of that stuff instead of getting jealous and like being like why don't I have that? My new mindset is I say, I can't wait until I get to do that because I know one day I will do it. And I think that's a really good mindset to have. It's not second nature to me for me to think yet, but um, it is a work in progress. 
And for as for the YouTube channel, I know I don't have a ton of subscribers, but I do think that the people that do watch my videos consistently have a lot more opportunity to connect with me. Obviously YouTube is long form and people get to see so much more of my personality, hear my thoughts, see what really, what really, what life is really like with Devin and Willow. So I hope you guys like the type of videos that I'm starting to put out now. Um, I obviously am always going to be here to help any new corgi parents or people thinking about getting corgis, but I feel like I've exhausted the knowledge that I have in that department. It's gonna be a freaking journey. I hope you guys are along for the ride and I hope you enjoy as I learn and grow and figure this stuff out. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week, hopefully with the, the next video. Bye. We love you guys. Oh, Charlie says bye too. Aw, baby.